my my ideas on origins of the landship. And I will be trying to show you some of, of, of this through visuals, because especially having the children, it will be good for them to be able to see and uh, also, you know, get their own impressions. And if anybody has any questions and so forth afterwards, you, you can. Well, you don't have to go on to the end, but if you want, you can stop now. That would be quite appropriate. Remember, it is 
my personal theory. So many historians are ready to get down on me with the questions and whatnot. You know, I will have to be able to answer some questions. But if you agree with me, let me know. Or if you have questions on it, also let me know. Now, most of the people that came from this region are called Coromantes or Coromantes. It's spelled either C or K. And uh, that word is taken actually from the castle or the fort that was built by the British in 1631 called Coromantine Castle. Now, a detail from the early maps of Barbados um, shows a, a slave escaping from the plantation and being chased by an overseer on horseback with a whip. And I'm saying that this was the norm. People always wanted their freedom. They wanted to be free, to, to live liberate, as a liberated person, to do and move as they wanted, as they would see fit. And the thing was to have freedom at any cost. Here, I have one of my oldest uh, images of the Barbados land ship going through their, their drills, accompanied by the top man or the engine of the ship. The land ship, as we know it, was an established part of Barbadian cultural life after the 1680s. I'm sure you will have got a lot of that information uh, yesterday from Dr. Burroughs. Here we have another shot. Because I'm going to be moving from the Barbados land ship and I'll also go to the ASAP so that you can see the people's as well. Into Barbados life came the land ship with its uniforms, its regalia, its ranks, and its dance. An organization with its meeting terms of savings its common purpose of mutual existence, of discipline, of respect, and authority. I hope the young ones in the Barbados landship will take note of the idea of mutual assistance, of discipline, of respect, and authority. Now here, the Asapo Company, this is a banner which um, I took pictures, some of my friends uh, took pictures, um, in 2009. So the ASAPO is still a functioning institution, and it operates very similarly to our landship. This company wears red, and its captain is a female, so there's no problem about, about only males and only females. As long as your father belonged to the ASAPO, this particular company, all of its children, male and female, were entitled to join. They took part in festivals, just like the landship, uh, in community life, and maintained their thing was to maintain the surroundings to make sure that it was always clean and tidy and so forth. But during slavery, there were a paramilitary or a maritime, I would say, a maritime organization which were on the lookout for the slave ships when they came to alert the villages. So you know, you keep far from the coast because they will steal you. Um, these companies, instead of carrying, carrying like the names of the ships and so forth in the Caribbean, they gave the names of the region where they came from. And I was intrigued with this whole idea. Um, you, you know the word susu. Never heard the word susu, which means a monetary contribution. Um, this was taken in July also in 2009, where I saw this little house where it has get your daily susu here. So you can, you can work for, uh, as they explained it to me, it's very similar to ours, where we have a meeting term. And, uh, you know, it's a cooperative. 
So one person is in charge, you can sign up. You pay in whatever amount for 31 days, and you get back 30 days. One day is the person who is running it. You must give them back something. So when I saw this, I said, Sue, so, so, I, I was so glad to see it was still something alive and well and something that, you know, um, this is still part of the Babylon trip benefits today. Here we see a very clear picture. I think Commander, this is Commander there. The other director is now the only surviving ship. Here, Captain Vernon Watson, now Lord High Admiral, carries the ship through its paces. And we have to note that the number of adults in comparison to the children in these later years. We had a lot more children. This is in the 19, a picture from the 1960s. Tukban, known as the engine of the ship, leads the land ship parade through God Street, which now. Note the presence of the flag bearer with his flag. Now, the flags were a very important part of the land ship, uh, but it has dwindled and dwindled in, in its functions and so forth. And hopefully, if we have an understanding, we have a better understanding of what it's supposed to um, mean, the purpose of it, maybe it will come back into vogue. Here we see Captain Watson going through the paces. Now this is an Asafo flag bearer accompanied by armor bearer. Now if you look at the flag for the Asafo, they are important symbols of the, uh, the organization as in the Barbados land ship. What would happen here is they would tell a story in Proverbs, which would be from one, from one ship to another because they would fight. Just like the land ship, you couldn't pass through people's territory, that, that would mean war. That would mean war. So here we see that that organization, just like ours, had flag bearers, had captains. So we have the same kind of titles and everything. Here is, this is for the Akwambo Akwambozi in Anomabo in Ghana. Um, the flag bearer is dancing. And he has a different symbol on this. Also note that to be a legal, to be a legal um, organization or ship, um, you had to carry, in the earlier years, it would have been the British flag. As in Barbados, you had to have the British Union Jack had to be on the flag. Uh, I know it will be the Ghanaian flag. Here is the coordinator. This would be a person who would be like our Lord Bayarma. He is the coordinator of the Asapo companies in Anamago, Ghana. His name is Nana, meaning elder. Nana Kwa Nayan Foeku Akwa. Here, um, I was, that was when I was doing my interview, and I was telling him about the landscape. And he asked me, um, when I said the word Susu, you know, for our meeting term, he stopped me. So he said, um, excuse me, is that the word you use in your language? I said, yes. He said, that is a fancy word. It is from us. It means a monetary contribution, right? I said, yes, right. And of course, I started to pray. Because as a person I'm looking for, I'm looking for all the evidence I could find to bring the two together understand the land ship and to and to also understand yourself on how the changes have come about. So another friend of mine from from Nigeria from the University of Ibadan, Dr. Bukola Oyen he was there looking on. You like you like the names, right? See we have a flagship bear here from, from the land ship. 
So we're saying that many of the titles and functions of the landship members have become the part, some of them, as to the purpose of the reenactment, because many of the performances actually done by the landship uh, are on the high seas, are reenactments. Reenactments. I also have my ideas on it in reenactments of law. And I will tell you shortly. Here are some of the arms again, the swords that were carried by the Barbados land ship um, as an accoutrement of swords. Well, the sap companies had guns and muskets. Uh, these were only taken up for special occasions. If you look well around there, you will see that there's also a gun hanging. So we use guns here as well, but they probably never have shot. Right, Captain? Right, that's right. Replicas of guns. So both of them carry arms. Can you remember who, who this was, Captain? Uh, Admiral Roach. Admiral Roach. Yes, that was. Yes. Yes, yeah, that wearing uniform with his cork hat, the epaulets. Uh, right, and it's on the table, that cork hat. <laughs> Oh, okay, you want me to go back to like going forward? What would you like? So the the similar the similarity between the the Asapo and the landship. Right. We have we have done and we have done that. Yes. Um I don't think they carry sure swords. I can't remember, but I must, that is something I will also have to check. Remember I haven't got all of my information as yet. And as, as people even give que and ask questions, then that encourages me to then go back and ask how it is. Sir Dighton, His Excellency, a past Governor General, 
So they have warned as he inspects the Barbados landship during an Independence Day parade, showing again their acceptance by the society at large as being part of the rank and file of, of the membership. This was a dock, just like how this house here is called the dock. And in this one, you will see this is Queen, uh, Queen Victoria's dock. And it is a drawing of a ship. Just in white, because it's, it was there for a very long time. And so therefore, some of these pictures now are, you know, quite faded. But this was the ship to tell you that this was the dock. Yeah, 1971. 1971. Yeah. Now I've gone back to Ghana, and here is what they were called their shrine, their dock. This uh, dock is called Donsin. This is number three, and the colors what they wear they are blue and white. I wore my blue and white on Monday when I came. The symbols in cement are two lions and a whale. You can see them? From land to sea to land. I'm wondering if that name for the land ship. Could have been. And the reason why ship was used would have been for the Middle Passage. And the gentleman in, in the white with black he is the drummer, he's one of the Asapo drums, and he was really doing his due, just like how our engine would have performed as the popular labor. Now this is a very important aspect of, of the Asapo institution, because in, uh, in Ghana, they played a very important role, a ritual role, at the installment of the king, or the Asante Lili. And um, the blowing of the horns, these are elephant tusks or elephant teeth. When um, I looked at the, at the information on the uh, aborted coup, the insurrection in 1675, they mentioned the use of elephant teeth for blowing. And then I researched that to find out there are seven, seven trumpets that we use, all cut off at different lengths, so that it would give a, a different sound. And when they blew these things together, it was so dissonant, it, it was supposed to create a, like a sonic barrier to prevent any evil from being taken if you go to Ghana today, when you go to the airport, you're going to see a sold um, horn lower, which is supposed to also dispel any evil. If you go to see the mausoleum of Ankurma, you will see they have also seven, seven horn blowers in, in, in brass, which is supposed to be still doing the same function, keeping away any evil. They're in brass, they are brass images. Oh, okay. 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 Well, we are looking at now at some of the maneuvers, large maneuvers, wide low, demonstrating. As I am saying, some of those movements were talking about the, the fold of the slave ships because you couldn't stand up, you couldn't walk upright. So you had to be down. So going down, it was part of what they say would have been the last mind of Again, we, we talk about that call, man overboard. And I am saying that it is a clue to the reenactment of that, that passage coming from Africa to the Caribbean as something they did not want their children to ever forget. And that is why that one call, man overboard, when they threw themselves overboard and got away from their chains, they prefer to die. Because they always felt anyhow that their spirits would go back 
to the line of where they came from. Now here, I understood that we offer some of you try out yesterday the maple actually to the dance in maple. And in the lunch here, as I've been instructed, only eight persons dance. In maple is only eight persons. Um, according to the oral tradition in Ghana now, Kwaku, you mean born on Wednesday, Anansi means spider. Kwaku Anansi taught the Akan people how to weave. So the eight dancers are symbolic of the eight legs of the arachnid spider. And the dancers demonstrate the weave, leading off with the king with the red ribbon and the queen with the white ribbon. And that is where they start. Maple dancing is part of the land ship's custom. In the British version, there are 12 or more persons who dance in pairs among, around the maple. But the land ship uses only four pairs, and the specific colors of red and white, blue and green, yellow and mauve, and orange and pink. Now, this is a photograph taken in 1974. It was the first choreographed dance of, of the of Lanchet maneuvers. And here is a picture taken from a rehearsal at Yorba Yard Pondyville, where I was a member. I, in fact, I was, I was the person, I was the man of the board. I'm saying here that at night, many of us had to travel to Highland St. Thomas, um, to the home of the BS director, to learn these maneuvers. So these were like on Wednesday nights and Friday nights, mainly people. And um, this is how we learned it. And then that is how, um, I think from 1987 for the 21st anniversary in Barbados, we did, us, uh, the members of Europe, went to different uh, zones to teach a lot of the children, the primary and secondary school children, how to do the landship. And uh, here, this is a photograph of some of the children. I can't remember which school this was at the time, but the primary school um, where they were taught the land ship dance. Um, and including here, the angel of the ship. On the kettle drum was uh, Nigerian, was our Nigerian, Nigerian drummer, Shola Olawiye, who was here, Gerald Seaman on the flute, um, Valence on triangle, Sabi on the boom drum. I can't remember. Everybody either has the chaplain or chaplain character. Uh, or masquerade character, the donkey, donkey head. And then our still walking master, uh, Jeffrey Andrew uh, Wilkinson, where you are flat. So that picture was taken uh, up by Bay Street by the Eskimo. So I, at this point, I. I've done quite a bit on um, trying to show you some of the origins. Um, and if there are any questions or so, this is the time that I do. Take any questions. Does this have similar maneuvers to the others? They have similar maneuvers because they do reenactment on battles, sea battles, and land battles. And they have a lot of um, usage with their flags. So do you see any similarities? Any similarities?
any more footage on the on the
putting this up, do you, do you suppose that he, when they initially started practicing the maneuvers, that they could have been drilled to prepare them for war? Yes, certainly were. And you, you mentioned that they used to fight with the other ships. Yes. What, what was the, what was the uh, motivation you think to fight? Because you, you mentioned that the Alliance seemed to be some source of camaraderie and support for members. Why were they? Yes, but you would still find that there would have been even um, mock battles between uh, one ship and Guard and Iron Duke or whatever. And to the point that a lot of our land ships had stick fighters. Most of them were stick fighters. And um, you use the wall of wood, which is a very hard, if you get a lash of them, let me tell you. But you know, then after they were out, it was outlawed from doing the stick fighting. And then when they had their picnics and so forth, they would go up into St. Andrew Park, from away from town, and they would do have their competitions and so forth up there. One thing I wanted, oh, one thing I wanted to say um, about this was that the Asako group, and why I think that the land ship or the organization of ASAPO in the Caribbean had to go on the ground was because of a particular dance that was performed known as a war dance, preparation for war, which took place in Antigua in 1735. It's called the Akem. And it was done by a man called Court. And what happened is, when the British realized 